ओके फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट लेक्चर ऑन एथेरोस्क्लेरोसिस so before i exactly go into its pathophysiology it is number one killer in the western world atherosclerosis is a number one killer in the western world almost 50% of deaths almost 50% of deaths in the western world is due to atherosclerotic sorry is due to atherosclerotic related complications so what are these atherosclerotic related complications can anyone tell what are these atherosclerotic related complications yes heart attack so the atherosclerotic related complications are ischemic heart disease and number 2 stroke and peripheral vascular diseases so what i am trying to tell it is a number one killer in the western world and almost 50% of deaths whatever you are seeing in the western world is due to atherosclerotic related complications so what are these atherosclerotic related complications like your ischemic heart disease and the second one is stroke and the third one is peripheral vascular diseases so can you tell me an example of peripheral vascular diseases for example if atherosclerotic lesions forms in your peripheral vessels you end up with you end up with what gangrene yes for example if we have atherosclerotic plaque in our peripheral blood vessels we end up in gangrene okay see do you think atherosclerotic plaques exist in each and every artery do you think it exists in each and every artery see friends in our body we are having two types of arteries one is medium sized arteries and other one is elastic arteries okay i will rub this and i will try to explain this in our body we are having two types of arteries medium sized arteries and elastic arteries so can you tell me what are these medium sized arteries what are the examples of medium sized arteries your coronary artery yeah see your coronary artery is a medium sized arteries and your popliteal arteries which is a peripheral blood vessel and you are what you are coronary arteries popliteal arteries and you are circle of villus arteries and what are the exam what are the examples of elastic arteries what are the examples of arnav tu nandar ki what are the examples of elastic arteries you are carotid arteries and you are aortic arteries so why i am discussing all this see if atherosclerotic plaque or if atherosclerotic lesion involves your coronary artery you end up with you end up with heart attack you end up with ischemic heart disease so what are this ischemic heart disease your angina next you are myocardial infarctions your sudden cardiac death so what are these ischemic heart disease it involves three number one is it involves angina so if this angina is severe then it end up in myocardial infarction and and, and ultimately it leads to sudden cardiac death if it is coronary arteries then if it is circle of villus arteries if atherosclerotic plaque involves circle of villus arteries 
so you end up with stroke so what is circle of willis see circle of willis they usually they are group of arteries which are present in your central nervous system where these arteries they form like a circle these group of arteries they join with one another and they form a circle so if you find any atherosclerotic lesion in your these group of arteries which are forming a circle then you end up with what stroke okay so first of all i will take my heart outside and i will place here consider this is my heart this is my right atrium this is left atrium and right ventricle left ventricle from this left ventricle we are having a very special aorta which is coming out and we call this artery which is coming out as aorta so this is ascending aorta and from this ascending aorta a very special artery which is coming out see from your aorta ascending aorta there is a very special branch which is coming out and we call this branch of artery which is coming out from aorta as your coronary arteries so why it is called as coronary arteries why it is called as coronary arteries see it is called as coronary arteries because it forms a crown like ring it forms a crown like ring around the heart what do you mean by crown yes it forms a crown like ring around your heart so that it is called as what coronary arteries and again this coronary arteries is divided into many branches to supply blood to different areas of heart so first of all what i do is i will separate this coronary artery here and i will place here first of all i will take out this a branch of coronary artery outside and i will place here after placing here i will discuss its structure i will discuss the structure of coronary arteries and we see the different layers we see the different layers of coronary artery and i will tell you which in which layer atherosclerotic plaque is formed okay so this is my coronary artery and i am taking what cross section this is coronary artery i am taking the cross section after taking this cross section let's observe the different layers do you know which layer is contact with lumen yes tunica intima so this tunica intima is composed of what yes endothelial cells these are what okay rather i put like this these are endothelial cells do you know which on which part this endothelial cells rest on yes endothelial cells rest on basement membrane do you know what makes your basement membrane which substance is involved in constructing this basement membrane see basement membrane is usually made of extracellular matrix proteins so what are the examples of extracellular matrix proteins like your collagen and your laminin proteins okay this is your endothelial cells and it rests on what basement membrane see next to this basement membrane we are having a very special layer or rather i say we are having a gap we are having a space so this gap or this space 
is given a very special name. What is that? It is called as subendothelial space. It is called as subendothelial space. So this is your subendothelial space. And at the end of this subendothelial space, we are having an elastic connective tissue. So what is that name? See, this is all your subendothelial space. And at the end of your subendothelial space, we are having a ring of elastic connective tissue. This ring of elastic connective tissue is called as, sorry, it is internal elastic lamina. And next to this internal elastic lamina, we are having we are having a muscular layer. So, what is this muscular layer called? Tunica media, which is composed of smooth muscle cells. It means your subendothelial space and your Tunicum media is separated by what? Internal, Internal elastic, elastic lamina. It is separated by an elastic connective tissue. Okay. Next to this tunica media, we are having what? Before tunica externa, we are having what? A ring. This ring is called as external elastic lamina. Okay. Next to this external elastic lamina, we are having tunica adventitia. Can you tell me in which layer your atherosclerotic plaque forms? Intima. Yes, it forms in intima. But exactly which part? See, intima consisting of your endothelial cells, your basement membrane, and your subendothelial space. But out of these three structures, in which structure your atherosclerotic plaque forms? Do you think it forms in basement membrane? Yes, it forms in your subendothelial space. It means whenever atherosclerotic plaque, as it is keep on developing, this is your subendothelial space, as it is keep on developing, it is pushing your what? It is pushing your basement membrane. And as the time progresses, it also push your endothelial cells and it keep on extending into lumen. For example, if this atherosclerotic plague ruptures, then it forms thrombus. It means as the time progresses, this atherosclerotic plague, which forms in your subendothelial space, is keep on extending into lumen. As it is keep on extending into lumen, do you think there is a normal blood flow? No, the blood flow is impeded, the blood flow is stopped. So whatever the tissue that is present next to this blood vessel, do you think it is receiving more and more blood? No, so the perfusion to the tissue is decreased. As the perfusion to the tissue is decreased, do you think this tissue is suffering from ischemia due to less blood supply? For example, if you consider this tissue as heart, Due to the decreased perfusion, you end up with ischemic heart disease. An example is angina. So first of all, what I do is, this video is designed to discuss how this atherosclerotic plague is formed in your subendothelial space. How your atherosclerotic plague is formed in your subendothelial space. What makes, see, Usually, your endothelial cells, which are covering your blood vessels, they don't want to form any atherosclerotic plague in your walls of arteries. But what makes your endothelial cells to form atherosclerotic lesion in the subendothelial space? It means these endothelial cells are actually involved or actually contributing to the formation of atherosclerotic plague. But we have to understand what makes these endothelial cells to contribute to the development of atherosclerotic plague. So this is one view of looking the layers of your blood vessels. So I will, I will make another 
view of looking the different layers of endothelial cells. This is one layer. See, whenever you, whenever you cut your end artery and you are looking from your top, this is the picture you are going to see. But we look at another variation. Okay. This is your what? Artery. Which artery? <laughs> Coronary artery. We want to develop angina. See, let's how we develop angina. This is your lumen. And this lumen is lined by endothelial cells. Next to this endothelial cells, we are having what? Basement membrane. And next to this basement membrane, we are having subendothelial space. And next to this subendothelial space, okay, this is this is called as internal elastic lamina. This is your subendothelial space. Okay, next to this internal elastic lamina, we are having we are having tunica media. This tunica media is separated from the tunica externa with the help of external elastic lamina. Okay. This is your tunica external. Okay. Friends, if you really want to develop atherosclerotic plague in subendothelial space, then you have to destroy your endothelial cells. Why we need to destroy your endothelial cells? Because Friends, your endothelial cells does not allow any proteins that are present in blood. Why it is not allowing proteins? Because these endothelial cells are having tight junctions. See, this is one endothelial cells and this is another. In between these two endothelial cells, we are having what? Tight junctions. So, due to these tight junctions, it is not allowing any LDL particles. An example of a protein is LDL, low density lipoprotein. So due to these tight junctions, it is not allowing any LDL into subendothelial space. Our goal is to form atherosclerotic plate. It means we want these endothelial cells to allow low density lipoproteins. It means this endothelial cell should be healthy or should be unhealthy. We, sh we should make these endothelial cells to be unhealthy. So what are these risk factors that makes these endothelial cells unhealthy? Can you tell me any risk factors? What? Yes, hypercholesterolemia. So shall I will discuss risk factors that makes your endothelial cells unhealthy. So, let me try to discuss the risk factors for atherosclerosis. See, the first risk factor is your hypertension. I will tell you what makes, why this hypertension actually destroys your endothelial cells. So, the next risk factor is, one is hypertension and another risk factor is, yes, hypercholesterolemia. Anything that is hyper is going to destroy your endothelial cells. And the third risk factor is hyperglycemia. See, hyper, anything that is hyper is going to damage your endothelial cells. One is hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, hyperglycemia, or rather I put diabetes mellitus. Next, if the individual is smoker, if an individual is smoker, due to presence of toxins in smoking, these toxins are going to destroy your endothelial cells. So the next risk factor is smoking. See, these are the four major factors which actually damage your endothelial cells which actually makes your endothelial cells to allow low density lipoproteins okay so whenever there is hypertension whenever whatever the blood that is coming from this direction as the flow of blood is increased as the flow of blood is increased due to this increased blood flow due to this increased blood pressure is directly going to damage your 
endothelial cells and if this blood is having if this blood which is coming from this direction if this blood is having chronically elevated levels of glucose chronically elevated levels of glucose then it is going to damage endothelial cells and if the patient is smoker whatever the toxins that are present in this it is going to damage your endothelial cells and if the patient is obese where there is fluctuations in his low density lipoproteins and high density lipoproteins so due to this increased low density lipoproteins hypercholesterolemia is nothing but increase in the elevation levels of low density lipoproteins so whenever there is increase in the elevations of ldl it is going to directly damage to endothelial cells so this all this whole drama is being explained under a very special term called response to injury model see your biology is entirely depend upon models we don't know exactly reality what it is happening here but researchers they tries to make models they try to assume yes this is the thing that is going to happen so usually whenever they assume they assume with models we are studying in our pharmacology like animal models where we give some drugs and we see the response so in the same manner if you wants to study this whole atherosclerosis game we study under a very special term called response to injury model see this risk factors are going to cause injury so whenever these endothelial cells are injured they have to show their response so how these endothelial cells are showing the response and how this exactly happening here we study under a very special term called response to injury model okay for example this is my endothelial cells which is now injured okay whenever it is injured previously it don't allow any low density lipoproteins but now whenever it is injured it starts allowing low density lipoproteins okay what makes this endothelial cells to allow low density lipoproteins see usually we have tight junctions but now due to this dysfunctional endothelial cells these tight junctions are lost whenever these tight junctions are lost now this ldl now this ldl which is elevated in your blood now it tries to escape in your subendothelial space see friends do you think ldl is danger whenever this ldl enters into your subendothelial space this ldl which is present now in subendothelial space do you think it is danger no it is not danger see if it is wants to danger then you have to do oxidation we have to oxidize this ldl understand so how do we oxidize this ldl we require free radicals where they are where these free radicals are nothing but they wants to take an electron from this ldl so if you wants to oxidize your ldl we require free radicals if you wants to require free radicals we require immune cells so what are the examples of immune cells you are monocytes nothing but you are white blood cells such as monocytes and t cells it means if you wants to oxidize your ldl we require free radicals if you wants to require free radicals we require immune cells so what are the examples for immune cells white blood cells nothing but your monocytes and t cells so what your immune cells thinks that these immune cells which are flowing in your blood which are flowing in the blood they think that there is some bacteria which is present in subendothelial space it don't know that it is ox it is ldl it just thinks that whenever your 
endothelial cells gets damaged and whenever it allows LDL it thinks that your monocytes thinks that there is some bacteria which is present in your subendothelial space. So due to this due to this assumption by your monocytes so as to kill this bacteria it has to enter into subendothelial space. Do you think just it enters into your subendothelial space? We require the help of dysfunctional endothelial cells. So how it is helping the monocytes to enter into subendothelial space? See whenever these endothelial cells are dysfunction I already told you it increases the or rather I say it allows LDL and at the same time it will express some special molecules on their apical surface. So these special molecules are called V camps. You have been studying in your inflammation. Vascular cell adhesion molecules 1. And these V camps they interact with other molecules that are present on the surface of monocytes called very late antigen 4. Okay, I will put out this exact. This is your V camps. Here we are having monocytes and this is your very late antigen 4 and this V cam it interact with very late antigen 4 and it will try to pull up this monocyte up to now what I have been telling is so whenever there is injury to endothelial cells it will allow LDL into your subendothelial space and at the same time it will increase the expression of vascular cell adhesion molecules and these vascular cell adhesion molecules they interact with very late antigen 4 and they try to pull up these monocytes which are flowing in the blood into subendothelial space okay this dysfunctional endothelial cells also do another thing okay rather I put endothelial cell here it is increasing permeability thereby it, thereby it allows LDL and it will increases the expression of special molecules called VCAMs and these dysfunctional endothelial cells they also release a very special factor called macrophage or monocyte colony stimulating factor. Do you think monocyte is dangerous or macrophage is dangerous? From where this macrophage come? Monocytes. It means macrophage is derived from monocytes. For this derivation process, we require colony stimulating factors. So these endothelial cells, they release macrophage colony stimulating factors. Whenever this macrophage colony stimulating factor is released in your subendothelial space, it will act on the monocytes which have been entered into subendothelial space and it will change its, it will transform this monocytes into macrophages. See the intention of macrophage is to destroy bacteria but here we are having LDL. So usually to destroy bacteria it will release free radicals. But as the assumption is wrong here, it, it assumes that here we are having bacteria, so I have to release free radicals. So it releases free radicals and these free radicals are going to oxidize LDL. So whenever this LDL is oxidized, so I will zoom on this subendothelial space. So we see what happens here. This is my subendothelial space. Upon this we are having internal elastic lamina, upon or below? below yeah monocytes have been entered here and macrophage colony stimulating factor changes its or transforms into macrophage this macrophage release free radicals can you tell me an example of free radical In example of free radical superoxide free radicals and your hydrogen peroxides This is your superoxide free radical and this is your hydrogen peroxide. And at the same time, we are also having LDL which enters 
this superoxide free radical as it is a deficient of one electron it tries to take this electron from ldl thereby this ldl is oxidized okay now this oxidized ldl is going to be taken your macrophages see it's like a bacteria macrophage has to phagocytose so previously it is not phagocytosing but whenever this ldl is oxidized it is taking up this oxidized ldl okay now this macrophage now this macrophage have been taken so much of oxidized ldl okay whenever this macrophage taken this oxidized ldl into its cytoplasm do you think it is still macrophage do you think it is still macrophage no can anyone tell what is this cell foam cell this cell is nothing but it is a foam cell previously it is macrophage but once it have been engulfed this oxidized ldl now it became foam cell okay now we are having one foam cell or many foam cells we are having many monocytes coming into endothelial space subendothelial space and there is more transformation of this monocytes into macrophages and these macrophages are taking more and more ldl oxidized ldl and they have been converted into more and more foam cells do you think these foam cells lives forever do you think these foam cells lives forever no after a certain period of a time these foam cells die see everyone has a death even your foam cells has to die it means it has to die either apoptosis apoptosis or it has to die either necrosis whenever these foam cells die whatever the ldl that is present in their cytoplasm do you think it is just vanishes ardham avutundi andarki ippudu nenu subendothelial space lo unnanu monocytes ela vachini avi macrophages laga ayini ldl ni teeskunnai ldl ni teeskun tarata foam cells laga marini ila maniki chaala foam cells untai after a certain period of a time these foam cells has to die whenever it is whenever it is died whatever the cholesterol or rather say whatever the ldl that is present in their cytoplasm do you think it just vanishes as it is died no it is not vanishing it is coming into subendothelial space now we are having what cholesterol in the subendothelial space camera run out now okay. now this cholesterol have been entered into subendothelial space see you were this cholesterol which have been entered into your subendothelial space now they coalesces now they they tries to aggregate this all this cholesterol they try to aggregate and they try to form a cholesterol droplet all this cholesterol which have been coming out of this foam cells they have been aggregated to form a cholesterol droplet this is called as a lipid core see previously we don't have any cholesterol now we are having this is called as a lipid core so as to form this lipid core we require foam cells yes okay. see once you form this lipid core we have to stabilize it once you form the lipid core in subendothelial space we have to stabilize it how are you going to stabilize see why do we require stabilize stabilization see if you don't stabilize this lipid core and it keep on bulges outside and it will it will escape out and it cause thrombosis and thereby it occludes the lumen so we don't want it so even in pathology there is some goodness yes this pathology is not so bad so as to stabilize this atherosclerotic plaque we should form what we should form 
a fibrous cap. See, like your cool drinks. If you want to keep this gas within it, we have to cap it. At the same time, if you want to keep this lipid core within the subendothelial space, we have to cap it. With what? With fibrous connective tissue. Can you tell me what this fibrous connective tissue is consisting of? Yes, collagen. It means we have to form here fibrous connective tissue. So this fibrous connective tissue is consisting of collagen or rather I say it is extracellular matrix. See this lipid core is formed by foam cells but if you want to form the fibrous cap, if you want to form your collagen, if you want to form your extracellular matrix, we require cells. As here we require cells to form this fibrous connective tissue. Can you tell me which cells are involved in forming the fibrous cap? Which cells are involved in your body to form collagen? Your tunica media cells, your sm vascular smooth muscle cells. It means these vascular smooth muscles, if it really wants to stabilize this lipid core, if it wants to stabilize this lipid core, it has to make collagen, it has to or it has to make extracellular matrix. For this purpose, these vascular smooth muscle cells, normally they usually seen in tunica media, but whenever there is formation of lipid core, this vascular smooth muscle cells, it tries to cross the intimal barrier and it enters into subendothelial space. Once it enters into subendothelial space, it proliferates. Usually, vascular smooth muscle cells does not proliferate. See, it is showing the primitive nature. See, vascular smooth muscle cells proliferate only during embryonic stages, during primitive stages. But due to this formation of lipid core, this vascular smooth muscle cells, it proliferates. It crosses the intimal barrier and it proliferates. Once it proliferates, it extends its population. After, its, after it has extended its population, now hold this population, they tries to secrete out extracellular matrix. And this extracellular matrix is keep on depositing here to form a fibrous cap. Can you tell me what are the components of atherosclerotic plaque? Yes, lipid core and fibrous cap. So as to form lipid core, which cells are required? Foam cells. And so as to form atherosclerotic plaque, which cells are required? Vascular smooth muscle cells. Okay. It means we are having two components of atherosclerotic plaque. One is lipid core and other one is fibrous cap. This lipid core is consisting of foam cells and this fibrous cap is consisting of vascular smooth muscle cells. Okay. This vascular smooth muscle cells also has another behavior. It not only contributes in the formation of fibrous cap but it also contributes in the formation of lipid core. But how it is contributing in the formation of lipid core? By changing its behavior into foam cells. It means whenever this vascular smooth muscle cells enters into your subendothelial space, it proliferates. After proliferation, it secretes extracellular matrix. So this, see, some population of this vascular smooth muscle cells, they behave like macrophages where they engulf what? LDL. So once they engulf LDL, even vascular smooth muscle cells, they transforms into foam cells. Okay. Now this lipid core is contributed also with vascular smooth muscle cells. This is all about, lecture is not ended. This is all about the contribution of your macrophages, of your vascular smooth muscles but there is another immune cell i have been telling that we are having 
white blood cells which have been entered. An example of white blood cell is monocyte. And another example of white blood cell is T cells. T cells also entered into subendothelial cells. But how this T cell is contributing in the formation of atherosclerotic plaque? Shall I discuss this? It's so simple. This T cell enters into your subendothelial space and these T cells release special cytokines called interferon gamma. These T cells release interferon gamma. This interferon gamma is it just goes and it tries to stimulate your macrophages. For example, here we are having macrophages. This interferon gamma goes to your macrophages and it makes these macrophages to activate more and more. So whenever this interferon gamma acts on macrophages, these macrophages now release free radicals. Whenever there is more and more free radicals are formed, more and more oxidation of LDL, more and more engulfing LDL, more and more formation of foam cells, more and more formation of lipid core. And at the same time, these macrophages release some pro-inflammatory cytokines called do you know cytokines? Cytokines are the special molecules which have been derived from immune cells which changes the behavior of other cells. These macrophages, they release every special molecule called tumor necrosis factor alpha. This tumor necrosis factor alpha is going to again activate your T cells. See, it is like mutual behavior. One is helping, see, these two cells are helping each other. Macrophage, T cell is helping macrophage by interferon gamma. Again, macrophage, whenever it is activated, it releases tumor necrosis factor alpha. Again, it activates the T cells. Thereby, again, T cells release interferon gamma. Again, it causes the stimulation of macrophage, more and more release of free radicals. So, this is how we form atherosclerotic plaque. This is how we form atherosclerotic plague. Do you think this plague is stable or unstable? Do you think this plague is now stable or unstable? It is stable plague. Why it is stable? Due to the presence of fibrous connective tissue. So in the initial stages, whenever you see this atherosclerotic plague, we are having a very thick fibrous connective tissue. We are having what? A thick fibrous connective tissue as the time progresses. As the patient is becoming more and more elder and he has been now entered into 50 years of age, usually at 45, we see a very thick atherosclerotic plaque and at the age of 50, this, atheros this fibrous connective tissue thickness have been reduced. Whenever this thickness have been reduced, do you think the stabilization is increased? Yes, decreased. Do you think it is still stable? So it is? unstable so do you think unstable atherosclerotic plaques are more dangerous or stable plaques are more dangerous unstable plaques are more dangerous okay this is the end of this whole lecture how do we form atherosclerotic plaque in subendothelial space so usually as it is forming in as the atherosclerotic plaque forms in the intima they are called as intimal lesions what they are called Intimal lesions. Okay, in the next lecture, we try to focus on drugs. How these drugs actually reduce the lipid core. How these drugs that are available currently in the market that actually reduces this lipid core, that actually reduces the progression of atherosclerosis, and how these different drugs are actually working at different levels of mechanisms to actually reduce this lipid core. Okay, thank you.